Hello, welcome back to this video tutorial series where we are showing an introduction to the IDF to pH toolkit. Uh, I'm Ed May with Building Type and uh, uh, glad to have you, you back with us here. Uh, so we're going to continue on our series of video tutorials showing the uh, different features and, and workflows available using the IDF to pH uh, toolkit here. And I want to sort of pick up where we left off with our introductory video. We had established, if you remember, we had established a successful connection to Excel. We had made a really simple Honeybee Energy Plus zone. We generated the IDF file and, and pushed the data from our Energy Plus file out to the Excel model. Uh, so we had uh, gotten that all, all working properly in our, our last round. And... Um, or our last video, and so now we want to pick up where we left off and start to fill in a, a couple of gaps here. Um, before we before we get going, or before we take a, a, a deep dive into the um, rhino or uh, grasshopper side, let's um, take a look at our uh, at our our PHPP model and see where we see where we left off. So I have my PHPP Excel model here in my uh, uh, in my view, I have my my active Rhino model and my my Grasshopper window as well. Let's take a look at our our TFA, or excuse me, our um, our PHPP, and see where we see where we left off. So here's our PHPP, our Excel model. If we go to the areas worksheet here, remember we're streaming or pushing all of this data, all this information from our Rhino model, from our Grasshopper model, into this Excel uh, model. So everything seems to be working here properly. But if I go to the verification worksheet and come here to the verification worksheet, you'll notice that I don't get any answers. I'm not getting any results. Everything's blank. The, so we are successfully pushing our geometry and our model out to the PHPP, and yet for some reason we're not getting any any results, any answers. So what I'd like to do in this um, in this video and maybe the next one is um, uh, figure out why that is and. Um, uh, uh, get this working properly before we start diving into a really detailed discussion of how to manage surfaces and geometry and uh, envelope assemblies, etc. We want to sort of get all of our connections working and, and get the, the basic functionality uh, flowing and get the PHPP operating here correctly before we start to add a lot of detail and start to really get into um, some of the, off into the weeds. So we're going to figure out why this is not working. And the reason this is not working currently is actually really quite straightforward. And it's uh, right. We can see it right in this sheet right here. Um, notice that for things like heat demand, peak heat load, cooling demand, peak cooling load, etc., all of these things, all of these uh, results are going to be displaying a kilowatt hour per unit area. In this case, a per square meter of floor area. And in the top line here, notice that currently in our model, the floor area is coming in as a zero. So when the heating demand or cooling demand or primary energy demand go to try and calculate, they're dividing by zero. And dividing by zero is obviously going to throw an error, and so that's why we're not seeing any results. So why is the treated floor area for this project still a zero? After all, haven't don't we have a floor in our building? Haven't we pushed that through? Uh, isn't that showing up uh, in our model? Well, let's take a look at where the treated floor area gets entered. So if we go to the areas worksheet, the retreated floor area gets entered here on row 34. And so we can either enter uh, a length and a width, or we could pass in just a single value representing the total floor area for our, our project here. And notice that these are all blank. So currently, we don't have any information. We don't have any inputs for our treated floor area. And uh, PHPP gives us a little warning here. It says, oh, hey, I think there's, a, I think there's something of an error on this, uh, on this, uh, uh, on this row here. And um, uh, we need to fix that. We need to, we need to uh, resolve that before we're able to, to, do any, to input any information. Um, there's another place, there's one other spot where we are we, we do not have yet enough information um, to calculate our results properly. If I go back to verification, so TFA, the tree to floor area, is one, one element that we need to input some information for. And then notice there's another little warning flag here, and that's for row 28 on the verification worksheet. And that's because we have yet to input a number of dwelling units. We haven't told the PHPP how 
many units are we modeling here? Is it a single single family home? Is it a multifamily building? Is it a hospital? We haven't told PHPP enough information yet about what it is that we're building for it to uh, actually make any calculations properly. So we need to input the number of dwelling units here. Um, that's going to be an important criteria for us to uh, actually get some results. So we need to f we need to figure out our t our floor area and we need to figure out the number of dwelling units. So let's go back to our rhino scene, go back to our grasshopper scene here and figure out how we're going to input that information. Let's start with this question of the treated floor area. So how are we going to input the treated floor area? Again, I'll go back to the worksheet, uh, areas worksheet. Where we're going to input that is we're going to try and put in some information here in this user determined treated floor area. So let me sort of put this off to the side so we can still see it. Um, and let's go back to our, our grasshopper scene. Now, how are we going to get that information in? And why is that information not already flowing through properly? As I said, after all, don't we have a floor surface? So I've got a floor surface here in my geometry. Why, why is this information not coming through? And that's true. That is a, um, uh, an, uh, a valid floor surface, and it is part of our model. It's, it's flowing through. But remember that for passive house buildings, for certified passive house buildings, when we're asked to input the treated floor area, what it's looking for is a net interior floor area. So we're looking to input the net interior floor area, not the external floor surface. So we need to do a little work here to uh, uh, input the net interior floor area of the building. Um, and we usually describe it as carpeted area. Um, so we're going to, uh, you know, anywhere that you would run a, or install a carpet or flooring is counted as part of that net interior floor area. So that would not include things like the thickness of walls or um, open areas for stairs, that kind of thing. So we typically have to draw out the net interior floor area there. So let's look at a couple different ways that we can input that information though in our, in our grasshopper scene. Uh, so I'm going to come into my grasshopper scene over here. Remember we had split our grasshopper scene into three pieces. We were building our initial model. We were exporting to Energy Plus, and then we were converting that Energy Plus model into a PHPP. I'm going to zoom in on the lower right hand side of our definition over here, and I'm going to go to uh, just before we write out to Excel. So remember we have this component here that writes all of our data to Excel. And if you remember before that, we had this create Excel object geometry component. And we currently were using just one of the available inputs there. So we were taking our PHPP objects and we were inputting them into the PHPP objects input. And that was uh, uh, converting all of the IDF information um, into valid PHPP objects. Okay, so why did the TFA not convert properly from our, our TFA objects here? Well, let's take a second. If we go and we take a look, let me boot up my file explorer here. Uh, let me boot up my file explorer. So if I go to, uh, if I go to, stop it. If I go to, where are we? C colon C. And remember, we saved everything in IDF to PH example. So I go in here, and we were saving everything. Uh, our IDF file is getting saved into the E plus folder. Open Studio, E plus, model to IDF. And we go to this in.idf and let's open it up with EP launch again. We looked at this in the uh, introductory video there. And let's take a look at the objects, the valid energy plus objects that we have in our, e our IDF file. And so the question here that we're asking is where in this list is the PHPP treated floor area stored and why is that data not flowing through properly into our phpp so which of these entries which of these inputs in the in the energy plus um, has that information on detailed interior um, carpeted area well the answer is that none of them do unfortunately that's not information which we can get from the idf file so this is one of those cases where energy plus and uh, the PHPP just work very differently than one another. Uh, and, uh, and so as a result, we're going to have to supply a little more information, a little extra information um, to our, our PHPP model. There's a, a little information that we cannot get from the IDF file. It's, it's just not, it's not here. It's not present in, this, uh, in any of the classes of our IDF file. So we're going to have to supply that information in a different way. So let's take a look at a couple different ways that we can supply that information. Well, one of the ways that I could supply that information 
is by feeding that data directly to this TFA input option on the create Excel object geometry uh, component. And you'll notice here that uh, if we hover over the TFA uh, input, it says that it can accept either a list of numbers, so we could supply a number directly, or we could supply some geometry. We could supply some surfaces or some curves um, that describe or, or um, uh, uh, illustrate the interior TFA, the, the net floor area. Um, and then we'll see in a minute, there's also another option. We can actually set this to read or interpret the uh, interior geometry from the zone geometry itself. So we'll, we'll see that in a minute. But let's take a look at the first couple options first. So first of all, the simplest entry method would be for me to just pass in a number. So I could just pass a number in. So I just typed in a number, any number, and I could pass that into my TFA input. And as soon as I do that, notice I have 200 pops up here on the input. And if we go to our verification worksheet now, now we're starting to actually get some results. So notice now I have a 200 in the denominator of all my um, uh, results. And so I'm actually able to calculate these results now at this point. Now, is 200 the right number? Uh, probably not. I don't know. I just pulled 200 out of thin air. So it would be better for this number to be actually tied to the geometry in our scene. So OK, so we could do that a couple of different ways. So let's get rid of that. And let's say that we'll, we want to let's reference in this floor area. So let's reference in that floor area. So maybe we bring it in by just doing a set one BREP reference. And maybe I pass that guy directly into the TFA. And so if I just pass the geometry in, so I can just pass the geometry in, and it's going to calculate the area of that, of that surface. So it's going to calculate the area of that surface, 400, uh, 400 uh, square meters. And we can verify that by just using a native grasshopper area component. Let's just hook this up. And there we go. This is our area. This is uh, square meters. So 404 square meters. Um, that's exactly what our component here is, is determining. Remember, though, that this is supposed to be describing net interior floor area. So it's not really appropriate to measure the outer boundaries here. So um, perhaps we need to do a little bit of um, manipulation here to sort of adjust this. So maybe I would, maybe I'll just set this to a, um, maybe I'll say, uh, let's, let's apply a derating factor here. So let's multiply that number by, oh, I don't know, 75%. Um, and that's going to give us some, that's going to give us a smaller number. So we go from 300 square meters or 400 square meters to 300 square meters. Um, uh, why the derating factor? Well, remember, we have to factor out all of the interior um, wall thicknesses and, you know, room for stairs and, and whatever else, um, you know, thickness of the exterior walls, like interior walls, all that kind of stuff. So maybe we would do it this way. And then in this case, I would pass that data in as a number rather than as a geometry. So I can sort of um, do some geometry manipulation here uh, uh, for sure. Okay, so a couple different ways that we could input that information. Now, the other thing that I could do would be to come in here and actually just draw the interior floor area. So maybe my floor area looks something like this. Oh, whoops. I need to put this on a different layer because I'm using a pipeline. So let's put this over here. We'll call this interior floor areas. Put this on a different layer, and there we go. All right, so this is no longer coming in as part of our our pipeline. And uh, so maybe I would take this and then reference in this guy. I would say set one B rep. And in this case, I would not want to apply that D rate factor. Right, I would just want to take the full the full geometry or the full the full area, um, because here I'm explicitly drawing the, the uh, interior floor area. And I could do a couple. So maybe I come in here, I'm on interior floor area layer. Maybe I come in here and I draw yet another one. So maybe I've got more than one room in my building. Very, that would be common of buildings. So maybe I have both of these. So in this case, I'm going to set multiple B-reps and I'm going to pass both of those uh, elements there. And in this case, it's going to sum up. It's going to create the sum of those uh, uh, floor areas. So again, a couple different ways that we can get this uh, into, our, into our PHPP model. But in any event, you want to describe 
somehow the net interior floor area of our building and now at this point we're actually functioning so now we're actually getting some results here so that's great now the one other piece that I would like to show um, is that we, we have one other piece here that we really need to, to fill in before our model is going to be working properly, and that's going to be this number of dwelling units. So I would like to input somehow the number of dwelling units. So how could I do that? Well, I could come in here and I could say, just type in the number one. So I could go into the Excel and I could type in the number of one and notice that it's now going to calculate the number of occupants and do a bunch of other stuff. That's totally allowed. That's valid, right? You can. This is how we always worked with the X, with the PHPP was we would just enter information one bit at a time, one number at a time. That's fine. I don't like that though. What I would rather is that all of this information be set in the Rhino or Grasshopper model somewhere, so that this information is always updated back at this single data source. So if this changes, I don't want to have to remember, oh, I set that number in the Excel document. Let me go to the Excel and I'll, I'll make that modification there. I want to have everything driven by my Rhino and, and Grasshopper model. So rather than just typing in a number here, we're going to actually set this using some setup components. So let me go back to our Rhino and Grasshopper here. Um, and um, we need to add we need to add a component to our, our panel here. So I'm going to come to the building type rollout, and we're going to uh, we're we're not, we're not going to get into this O1 model yet. We're going to stick in this O2 IDF to PH um, uh, a section, and there's a, a, a two components here that we need in order to set the number of dwelling units or the the type of building properly. So the first thing that we're going to need to set is we're going to need to uh, we're going to need to drop this setup component onto the canvas here. So, so far we've been using this create Excel objects geometry component, and now we want to use this create Excel objects setup component. So I'm going to drop this guy onto the canvas and I'm going to drop him sort of right next to the geometry one here. So the geometry one, remember, is taking the IDF objects and converting them over into valid PHPP writable objects. This guy is going to let us set up it's going to let us set some of the options or some of the settings for the PDHPP, so non-geometric uh, elements, uh, things around the control of the PHPP, things like the number of dwelling units, for instance. So currently, this guy is outputting nothing. So there's nothing coming out. You see a bunch of unused slots. Those are the potential um, areas where we might have some information being passed out. And notice that it's got a bunch of inputs for things like verification, climate, air tightness, uh, simple ventilation systems, heating and cooling systems, summer ventilation, and domestic hot water. So a bunch of um, sort of non-geometric inputs for the PHPP model that we might want. Um, let's restrict ourselves to looking just at this verification element. So the verification input here, uh, if we hover over it, it says this is an optional input for verification worksheet items. Well, notice over here we're on the verification worksheet, and this is one of the verification worksheet items that I would like to set. So I'm going to input a verification component. It says connect a verification output from the PHPP uh, setup component. So I need the PHPP setup component. So the PHPP setup is going to feed in to this um, uh, uh, Excel converter. So I'm going to come back up here to O2 and I'm going to grab this PHPP setup. And this is going to give me a bunch of inputs for things like verification, climate, ventilation, etc. I'm going to drop this onto the canvas. It's kind of a big uh, component here. And notice that this has some inputs for number of residential units, um, whether or not to use mechanical cooling, the average thermal mass or specific heat capacity of the building, um, some certification options, internal heat gains options, um, uh, climate data set options, uh, air tightness options, etc. So these are all non-geometric settings that we might want to set for our PHPP. If I take a look at the defaults, so the default outputs here for things like the verification. So this is a verification worksheets object, and it has some, some default settings. It's going to set the number of residential units to 1. It's going to set the cooling, mechanical cooling, um, off, so passive cooling. It's going to set the specific heat capacity to 60 watt hours per uh, 
degree Kelvin per square meter. Um, and it's going to set the country to the United States and the building name. It's just going to give it a name based on today's date. So that's pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and take that verification output and connect it to the verification input. Right, so I'm going to do that. And as soon as I do that, notice over here that this Excel converter is going to figure out how to turn this information into the right type of Excel objects to write to the PHPP. So for instance, we have a worksheet, a cell range, and a value. Notice they're all verification worksheet. So they're all going to be written to the verification worksheet, and they're all going to be written out to the various cell ranges. So for instance, if we come in here, and we are going to look for uh, uh, cell F28 over here, verification, cell F28, we're going to write the value of 1. So that's one dwelling unit, which is what's going to get input here. Now we could change that. We could come in here, and we could override that. I could say 3. And I could hook up a three input to the number of residential units. And then notice here, F28 is going to get the value of three. So I can set that if I want to, but I'm just going to leave this at the defaults for now. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave the defaults. Defaults are going to work just fine for us in this case. So how am I going to now get this information from my grasshopper scene into my Excel document? Well, I'm going to do it the same way I did with my geometry. I'm going to take this information and I'm going to connect it to this Excel objects output. But, it, but I want to continue to pass these geometry elements as well. So I actually want to combine these two together. So I'm just going to use a native entwine option here, which is going to let us merge or entwine these elements together. And as soon as I pass that guy in, notice that this updates to 1. My specific key capacity adjusts. Uh, and now I'm getting good, valid results out of my PHPP. So I've got some setup options and some geometry all flowing together into this Excel options input. And so this guy's going to uh, read in um, all of our worksheet ranges and values. So let's do a little bit of cleanup on our grasshopper scene here before we finish up. I'm going um, to take this guy and I'm going to put this over here. Um, and we're going to call this, let's say this is convert. This We'll call this... Um, export to PHPP, or let's call it export to Excel. That'll be fine. And just to kind of keep things manageable here. So we'll do it this way. So let's say this is our converter. So this will be our converter. And then uh, I actually think maybe we want yet another. Let's do this. We'll put this guy here. So this is all our convert. Well, we'll just do this. We'll put this here. And then... Let's do this, do this, and we'll say, um, we'll say set up the PHPP. So we'll call this our PHPP setup in this section here. Let's make this a little tighter, keep it all a little bit more manageable, and then we'll move this guy over here. Okay. So that makes a little bit more sense, right? So we do it, whoops. So we've got our so our data, our workflow is that we're going to create the honeybee zone. Let me fix that. We're going to create the honeybee zone. We're going to export the honeybee zone to Energy Plus. We're going to convert the Energy Plus IDF file into a PHPP valid objects. We're going to do some setup. Right? We have some setup for our PHPP, and then we export everything to the PHPP, the Excel model here. So that's going to be our our, our workflow from from now on, and we'll keep sort of adding elements to this chain, and we'll sort of um, continue to, to manage these elements as we go through. OK, so uh, this was kind of a long video as well. I think we'll cut this one off here. Um, hopefully that made sense. Um, when we come back, I'll, I'm gonna, um, we'll do a second video on this topic. And, and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about how we can manage some of those interior room elements as well. Um, it's uh, highly uh, likely that we might want to do this in an even more automatic fashion. For instance, I do not like that I reference the floor areas back here and I reference the floor areas over here. I don't like that. Um, I would prefer if they were sort of joined together, if they were sort of only in one place. So we'll take a look at that in the, in the next video, and we'll see if we can't make this a little more streamlined, a little more manageable, um, reduce the duplicate um, uh, referencing uh, or the like.
So hope to see you in the next video. And uh, I think we'll uh, cut this one off here. All right. Thanks, everyone.